break through to the left. He needs to beat one other level, and he does. Will Purdom is going to take this all the way. 70 yards for a St. Francis touchdown. Talk about a way to start off your season for Wheaton St. Francis there, Ryan. It runs to the left side of the line. Big open hole. And when I was talking about it before the snap, the miscommunication by Kelvin, they didn't know who to match up with who. So there was a bit of confusion at the start. You didn't have a safety up high because he was he thought he had to play man against one of the receivers. That's what left that big lane open as he had dropped into the box a little bit in closer to the line, and that allowed for the speed of Purdom to get past and for the easy touchdown. So just like that, it is a 6-0 lead for the Spartans of St. Francis pending the extra point. Trevor Jungle's out for the extra point, kick is up, and it is nothing but good. And that's the thing with Purdom too. If you give him that much space, he's going to take advantage of it. Maybe not every time get a 70-yard touchdown run, but that's still something that you have to be aware of as Kelvin for the Panthers. I, I mean, make a quick note here. Uh, we do have a flag on the field, but it was against the Panthers, so they will. Uh, Spartans will decline that, and the extra point will remain good. So it still remains seven nothing Panthers. And here's one more look at that Purdom seventy yard touchdown run. And you see here the angle as well being taken by the defensive players for Kelvin is an issue as well. They didn't cut the angle enough towards the side in order to cut off Purdom. They don't. I guess they didn't realize how much speed he had. Now here's another look at it as well. As you see, you look at around towards the bottom right of your screen. Look at all the space that is back there, and if Purdom wants to get to the next level, what she does, it's all free space for him. But right, and that all goes to the pursuit, though, from the safeties and the linebackers. You have to take a better angle to Purdom. They took a bad angle, and that's what allowed him to blow by them. So we have 9-13 remaining to go here in this first quarter. 7-0 St. Francis over Kelvin Park High School. And as Chris mentioned, they had quite a drive coming in from the city of Chicago. Coming out to the suburbs of Wheaton, Illinois. More just the traffic is what that why is another it's quite problem. A drive <laughs> more than anything else. Yeah, if you, if you live around Chicago for a long time, you know, especially on the highways, there's a lot of traffic. Especially on a Friday. Kind of every day, for that matter. <laughs> now, last last kickoff we saw wasn't very good here for Wheaton St. Francis, and and that's something early on in this game you want to improve upon since you're getting another one here. Not let this go out of bounds and give really good field position to Kelvin. Didn't hurt them last time, but still something they want to focus on. So Trevor Jungles out for the kickoff, his second kickoff of the first quarter so far after that 70-yard touchdown run from Will Purdom. And that is a much better kickoff, as Chris, you alluded to just a moment ago. And that one, I believe that was touched too, so they're going to have to pick that one up, are the Panthers. And the Spartans were all over that one, as that's going to be spotted at about the 7 or 8-yard line. We'll get another look at that in just a second, but it, that's been the issue so far for the Panthers, miscommunication, and there it is. It's a muffed kickoff, if you will. It's eventually picked up, but no routes to run anywhere at all. Well, like you said, it was miscommunication. Two players are back deep for Kelvin, and, and one thinks maybe the other is going to get it, so he doesn't square up to the ball. He tries to catch it on the side, and that's what caused him to miss it. He wasn't in front of it, and it moved. It, it started to drift a little bit away from him, and enough for he for the where he couldn't grab the ball. So a lot of yardage to work with here, and especially that you're almost back into your own end zone of the Panthers of Kelvin Park. I formation, one out to the right, one out to the left, with Luis Maldonado under center for the Panthers. Snap taken and a run over to the right side, but met right away there as Mario Martinez is going to lose a few yards on that play. The defensive line really making its impact. Made often and early. Able to get past the offensive line there. A couple of players got through into that middle, up the middle of the gap. Two players got to him, and then it was just a gang tackle. To yeah, that was Martinez. Gregory Bogdanski who had the tackle, and he was untouched going through the line of scrimmage and going after Mario Martinez. So a few yards of a loss there on that run there by Martinez brings up second down and 13 as we are now under eight minutes and 30 seconds to go here in quarter number one. And I think that goes back to communication again right now. For Kelvin, that's more the important thing now than anything else. The offensive line assignments, you have to know them. That's what happens there. Two guys think they have the same assignment, and neither one gets the block on him. Shotgun formation now, one out to the left, two to the right. And this one, it's going to be Dave Ryan Clark at center and intercepted and taking it in for a pick six will be Dan Boss, the six-foot defensive back, touchdown, St. Francis. A ball thrown into triple coverage, and 
most of the time that's what's going to happen. Not necessarily a pick six, but an interception. Having to make a quick decision as he's rolling out is the quarterback here for Kelvin and Maldonado. 